it's uh, nine o'clock on Sunday morning and uh, this street is normally packed with cyclists and joggers on a Sunday and Saturday. Not today. Painting the outside of the house is going to be a bit of a challenge because walking on those roof tiles up there is pretty tricky because they break very easily. So for the time being, I'm going to try the easiest part. This is where we have to put our rubbish because the local council haven't provided any of those wheelie bins yet. So this ends up looking like a Christmas tree most evenings. And just here, we've had to put all the patio furniture in here in the front garden next to the bike, just to get it out of the way. Yes, those bits of painting up there are going to be a little bit tricky. I'm not entirely sure how to do that, so I'll have to think about it. This is Floyd. He doesn't really like going out onto the road very much and likes to sit there and observe life as it goes past. And uh, if you go anywhere near him, he runs straight back in the house. Well, this time I'm using my Galaxy Note 8 and using voice commands, so hopefully this is going to come out okay. Well, this is day two, um, or is it day three? Yeah, I think it's probably day three. Um, the, the government was considering uh, some kind of, well in Spanish it's called Estado de Sitio, which uh, could mean state of siege, state of emergency or martial law. Uh, martial law sounding a bit um, scary, I must admit, with soldiers in the streets. And uh, of course many people here in Argentina have um, you know, memories of the martial law and curfews that were imposed back in the um, back in the mid 70s and up to and including 1983 so we really don't want to be reminded of that but anyway uh, the president has just confirmed that um, uh, he's probably not going to do that uh, as he doesn't want to uh, to treat Argentines like idiots or sort of, to coin a phrase more or less what he said but um, in other news, uh, they are being very strict about uh, this total quarantine and have um, you know, arrested, I think, as far as I can see, about 2,000 people so far and confiscated or impounded uh, quite a few cars, a few hundred in fact. So they're taking it very seriously and I can uh, certainly support the government's actions. I think they, they've taken the right steps at the right time, early, and locking people away, you know, in their houses uh, with just being able to go to supermarkets or other essential uh, areas is, is the right thing, early, start, you know, start now, because uh, people are people and uh, in other countries, I can see that people are just not heeding the advice. They're, you know, grouping together and doing all the things that they shouldn't be doing. Because at the end of the day, this is, um, it's not just your health, it's everybody else's. So I applaud the Argentine government for, for taking these steps. Um, and, uh, and of course, this particular president has only been in power since December the 10th, so um, you know, imagine that, he's just become president and he's now got this major uh, crisis to face, which I think, regardless of political persuasion, they're handling very well indeed. And you can't muck about. Well, the other day on Friday, we washed all the walls down in the end, and it has made a big difference. All that horrible black mould where the sun doesn't get onto the wall. Has, we, we managed to take all that off. It was a bit of a ball break, I've got to be honest. So now all we have to do is uh, do a little bit more scraping 
loose and flaking paint and now fill in all the cracks and everything else that needs filling in. We were having a debate on what colour grey was suggested, but I don't like that, so I think we'll stick with the cream. Rachel's never very far from the scene. In other news, uh, an Argentine gentleman by the name of Martin Echigaray, sorry, that's a rather difficult name to pronounce, uh, he left uh, Tierra del Fuego, which is right down the furthest points in, point in South America. He left there in October 2017 to walk all the way to Alaska. Anyway, he apparently reached uh, as far north, only recently, uh, as Fargo, um, as far north as Fargo in North Dakota, not very far from the Canadian border, but uh, apparently had to stop there because of, because of the virus. Um, so he, he's stuck over there, um, probably wondering when he's ever going to finish this incredible odyssey. Uh, and he's walked about 22,000 kilometers so far. Certainly a man of determination. And um, I certainly take my hat off to him. Um, through the cold, and you know, it's an incredible feat. Right, well, we've just started filling in the cracks, and uh, well, we've never, both of us have never done this before, but it was always a first time. And with any luck, we should get this finished in the next couple of hours. I would have thought the wall's not in very good condition, as you can see. But it has to be done before we start to paint. Obviously, there's a huge crack running down here. Which the previous owner has put some sort of tape over it and then painted over it. But, you know, the tape has come apart. Anyway, we'll crack on. Well, we filled in a lot of the cracks and holes, indentations, and it's uh, certainly looking a lot better. The trouble is, the more you look at it, the more you realise that you missed a bit. Yeah, I would say 90% of the, the work is done prior to painting. And of course, in this really warm weather, it does dry very quickly. So you have to get on with it. Uh, tomorrow I'll be sanding it down. Luckily I've got a, an electric sander, which should help. In fact, this is just like any other Sunday, really, in Buenos Aires. You can smell people's barbecues or they're cooking chorizo. Neighbors eating out in the garden, using their pools. Really, apart from the fact there's no traffic, it's just like any other Sunday, to be honest. Oh, and I'm trying to... It was suggested that we paint these walls that grey colour you can see before you, which I suppose one way of describing it is battleship grey. But I'm really not too sure about it. I think we should stay with the same colour, which is like a sort of cream colour, if you like. Well, here's a little bit of a, a tour around the living room now that we've painted it. Certainly looking a lot better than it did before. Because we had uh, we had a nasty hole just up there. You can just about see it. Um, which is a leaking water tank up in the attic. Um, we, anyway, we finally got round to it and uh, a definite improvement. It's actually a very dark room because uh, we don't actually get any sunlight in, into this living room. Uh, so I've opened the curtains, which we acquired off a friend who is selling her house. 
and uh, I've opened them because, well, obviously to get more light in the room, but normally they're closed because there's a pavement outside and people obviously walk past and really I can't have myself sitting at the PC and people gawping in the whole time, which is what, what was happening before. But it looked absolutely terrible before I decorated it. And of course, the first thing you'll notice is uh, the front door, which now that we've painted the walls, the door needs painting. So I'll be getting onto that maybe next week. And luckily being, uh, having an overhanging area outside the front door, it doesn't really matter if it's raining when I do it. I also ran out of space for the books, so I'm gonna to have to find a home for those books on the floor. And that fan, I had to fix that because when you switched it on, it was wobbling all over the place and I thought it was gonna take off. So that's fixed. And we bought this fabulous TV for the Football World Cup, which was when, 18 months ago? 4K telly, LG, with an amazing sound bar. Well, that's it for the living room. But this is the kitchen, and of course, having painted the walls and ceiling, naturally, I had to paint the door. That took several coats because it was in a bit of a state of having, well, at least never having been painted while we've been here. And the rainwater falls directly directly onto it, so anyway, it's a big improvement. The kitchen's very basic. I reckon those units are from somewhere in the 70s, 70s or 80s, but they're made of solid wood. It's none of your chipboard, so just goes to show that in those days, they used to make things to last. It's not a very big house, but uh, it's quite deceptive, quite spacious, and um, Alexis has got his own area upstairs, which is like a self-contained little flat with a bathroom. So he's quite lucky. In some more news, um, the ex-president, Cristina Fernandez de Kirchner, is returning from Cuba with her daughter, Florencia, who has been in Cuba for, oh, I don't know how long now, it seems like about 18 months, being treated for depression. And the question is, why couldn't she have had this treatment over here? Well, the answer is, uh, because she's, she, with her mother, she's facing um, some charges of fraud, and uh, is due to actually go to court to face those charges. Anyway, the good news is that her mother, who um, loves to talk a lot, uh, is coming over and she's going to go into self-isolation for 14 days, which is good news for all of us, because we really don't want to hear anything from that woman. Thank you very much indeed. And in some other news, one would imagine that with everybody being confined to their houses over a long period of time, um, you might hear the odd argument from perhaps some of the neighbours. Well, there's... Uh, some neighbours across the road who long before this uh, virus uh, gripped us all um, used to have the most terrible fights, the most terrible arguments between um, I think it's the mother and the son uh, which have been going on for, for actually, actually for years and they're, they're so heated and violent and nasty that on many an occasion we've been tempted to call the police. That's not something I would normally do, but they, they were frighteningly violent to the extent that you fear that, that somebody is going to die or get shot or something like that. Well, anyway, yesterday they had one of the most atrocious arguments uh, screaming at each other that, I, that I've ever heard. And it went on for, I would say, about 45 minutes. Um, I was tempted to call the police, but under the circumstances, I'm sure they've got better things to do. Um, you know, with, 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 with the crisis we're all facing at the moment. Uh, it really was nasty, and I've got an open mind, uh, but 
you know, one day something really bad is going to happen in that house. Anyway, the father turned up, and fortunately about 10 minutes later it all subsided. But I don't think it's going to be the last time, and um, I really hope that they can try and live together in harmony, or that's, that's going to be quite difficult over the next few weeks. So we shall see. So what else is there to do? Um, well, we've got to paint our bedroom. We've got uh, a lot of doors to paint, a small hallway, and finally uh, the little office um, which, uh, which my partner is using. So that's going to take a while and um, I would imagine that um, you know, this time of spending at home, uh, I'm, well, I'm hoping I'm not going to run out of things to do. I shouldn't think I will. Uh, I've also got some articles to write for Dave's Computer Tips and maintain the forum, make sure everybody's behaving themselves. Uh, oh, I actually heard a car go past. Blimey, that's unusual. Uh, that's about the fifth today. Um, so anyway, on you know, let's end it on a lighter note, and uh, I hope to have some more progress reports for you on the painting of the patio wall, which I'm hoping to get finished. I would think by Tuesday evening, or even sooner, because it's, uh, the weather forecast says we're probably going to have some rain on Wednesday. So. Tomorrow we're sanding and hopefully starting the painting. And um, well, that should be it. Get back to you soon. Stay safe.